All right, this is my third time attempting this video. Hi, little skeletons. It is Disney Queen Skelly here. Just a couple of things before we get started with today's video set of videos, or I guess this time, this point in time set of videos. For one, I am sick. I have a bit of a head cold, thanks to my mother. Uh, so if my voice sounds a little scratchy, or if I sniffle a lot, or if it looks like my mouth is hanging open throughout the majority of these videos, it is just because I cannot breathe out of my nose right now. But I still wanted to film because I have the opportunity to, and I never want to miss an opportunity to film. Number two, I actually bleached my hair recently. Uh, you can't really tell because I just showered, it's, so it's a little dark. But it looks really good once it's dry. I'm trying to get my hair back to that red hair stuff, and I'm also doing a nice little... Uh, nose treatment with those mighty patches haven't done one in a very long time so very interested to see how gross this turns out tomorrow obviously I'm still trying to do my spa days uh, even when I'm sick because it's the only thing that's gonna help me feel better and number three I know it's been a very long time since we actually touched this playlist I know I have the tarot cards that I need to eventually do for the channel but uh, until then I found two Nightmare Before Christmas videos I actually want to react to. I figured if there's Nightmare Before Christmas videos that I come across on my YouTube feed, I'll just smack them in here and we'll be able to add to this playlist that's kind of just been collecting dust for a while. So I did not know there was a Nightmare Before Christmas ripoff. Um, that was made a while ago. So we're going to react to a video made by a creator named Saber Spark. I personally love watching him. I binged him all throughout, I think, 2020 and 2021. Literally had nothing else to do, and it was just honestly really nice. I love the way his videos are made. Um, I love just, I love watching him. He's really cool. Um, so also, um, if you look down in the description box, this video and his uh, channel are linked, so you guys can go subscribe to him and watch this video on your own without me pausing. Uh, so without further ado, let's react to this Nightmare Before Christmas ripoff that I did not know existed. All right, so let's go ahead and crank up that volume, and let's go. Soon it will be Halloween. The Nightmare Before Christmas, one of the most iconic stop-motion animated films of all time. It somehow did the impossible and cemented itself as both a Halloween and Christmas viewing tradition. I mean, uh, what other movie can even claim that? Also, it's wild how this film was initially viewed as just okay when it was first released, only to grow into a pop culture phenomenon over the next 30 years. Wow, <laughs> 30 years. <laughs> Looks like Jack isn't the only skeleton in this video. It's me, I'm the other skeleton. Surprised, aren't you? However- I think as of 2024, this movie has reached 31 years old now, so it's pretty incredible that over 30 years, something that was just regarded as okay has now taken off immensely as just a cult classic. And it kind of surprises me that this movie was only seen as just okay instead of as, you know, the wonderful movie that it's regarded to as today. With any masterpiece that graces our eyes, comes along with it its cheap imitators. And oh man, am I talking cheap. Unfortunately, I'm talking about the mockbuster felony that is Witchmas. Yet another addition into the ripoff genre from its director, Reggie Daniels, and the uh, studio that commits uh, war crimes against humanity, Wow Now Entertainment. I, I can't quite explain in proper words how much I utterly despise this company. Oh, your day will come, Wow Now. Just you wait. I got a video that is locked and loaded just for you. I I don't know if I've watched that video yet or not, but you guys should really check out his other videos. He's done a lot about movies that were ripped off, um, that ripped off other successful movies, and he just tears into them. Stay tuned. Reggie has been responsible for such hits as uh, the, the Grump Who Stole Christmas 2. Geez, I, I wonder what that one's about. Also, we have the writing chops of the legendary BC-14, known for the hood classics of Bigfoot versus Megalodon, the legends are real. Spoiler alert, Megalodons were, in fact, real. Though I wish this movie was not. Bigfoot, <laughs> meet me at the dock immediately. We're going to the six lockup to interrogate our new prisoner. Interrogation. Whoop-de-f***ing-do. 
What the actual fuck is that? Real quick, I want to give a quick shout out to this video sponsor. We're gonna skip right ahead to that. But what about Witch Miss? What the hell could this movie possibly be about? Well, the story follows a witch named Selma, who serves as our Jack stand-in. Selma here has become disinterested in the idea of Halloween, but for like, no real reason at all. We're never really told why. She just sort of is, much to the chagrin of her henchman, Waffle. And this is a bowl of Waffle? What the fuck? Mister. Meanwhile, in a non-descriptive and devoid of any charm fantasy village, a Christmas elf named Cheer and a leprechaun named Patrick are wandering around and planning for their own respective holidays. Now, I don't want to speak for the people of Ireland, even though I am one-fourth Irish, but um, <laughs> something tells me this accent isn't exactly accurate. The way the actor slips in and out of it, like it's hard to tell if Patrick is from Ireland or like... <laughs> Louisiana. Grandest holiday of them all, St. Patty's Day! Meanwhile, in the ho- God, that is just awful. Plus, that castle looked like a really bad Disneyland rip-off castle. Just saying. Land. Yes, the Halloween land. Waffle plans with the demon Candy Cane. Not sure why the Halloween demon is named Candy Cane. On how to get Selma interested in Halloween again. But they don't ever actually tell you what their plan is? <laughs> Not really. Candy Can is just like, we should do this. And then the scene is just over. Just like that. We then bounce back to Cheer and Patrick, who I guess have wandered into Halloween land and gotten lost. I say guess because this movie will often just throw you into scenes, tell you something happened, but not actually show it, and then move on from there and just sort of leave you to piece it together yourself. Because, you know, f*** you apparently. This particular stretch of the movie is like watching paint dry. Cheer and Patrick stand there and talk about nothing for what feels like an eternity. And when I say stand there, I mean that literally. They do not move. They do not emote. There's no animation save for the bottom jaws, which I'm guessing were plugged into some sort of script and auto mouth synced. They just stand there. <laughs> Meanwhile, so. <laughs> Okay, that, that was pretty funny. <laughs> it's where that Cheer and Patrick have wandered into her domain and decides to mess with them by beckoning them over to her castle where Cheer tells her about Christmas, which she becomes fascinated with for no real reason whatsoever. She then decides she wants to take it over and make it. You know, it's hilarious. I was actually curious as to how this was a Nightmare Before Christmas ripoff because it's just called witch miss it's not like it's called the evening before a major holiday or something like that so i was seriously curious how this was a ripoff and now that you know there he's explaining like oh she was disinterested in halloween and now these two magical beings from christmas are telling her to take over yeah i can see why this how this was a ripoff new holiday called Witch miss and fill it with ghosts and goblins and all things creepy, which to me sounds just a, a whole lot like Halloween, <laughs> the holiday that she's supposedly bored with. I want to point out that the movie is only an hour long, and at this point, we are about halfway through, and we are just now getting Selma's main motivation laid out on the table, which once more is just another Halloween. And the Nightmare Before Christmas, Jack had to convince the town to get on board with Christmas in their own particular spooky way. But for this movie, they just want to take Christmas for themselves. Like, for the Nightmare Before Christmas, it sort of works as this really great metaphor about appropriating cultures and also, like, appreciating your own. Where for this movie, it's just nothing. <laughs> it's Christmas, you speak. So basically, just no plot whatsoever. Like a lot of fun. Anyway, Selma lets Patrick and Cheer leave for whatever reason. Uh, when Santa then learns about Cheer being like gone and missing, and sends out a trio of elf brothers named, get this, Jingle, Tingle, <laughs> Bingle. <laughs> Creativity. 
at its finest, folks. Uh, they, he sends them out to go look for him, but uh, they won't have to look far because they are back in the same spot where they stood and talked for the first half of the movie. So they go looking for cheer and then they meet Groot. <laughs> I'm sorry, not Groot. I mean Wood Indra, the sorcerer. Fuck, <laughs> it does look like Groot. But, like, it looks like it's Groot's lesser-known cousin that just kind of got exiled from family events. Who is Selma's sister? But also, like, a tree lady for whatever reason? Okay. She tricks them into thinking she can reunite them with cheer, but instead cast a spell to separate them further. But here's the thing. Not too long after that, the brothers are shown in seemingly the same underground cavern that Cheer and Patrick are in. And the brothers get escorted to them by a magical cavern worm who just so happens to come along and get them out of this. What? Movie! I give up! I shall like- At this point, I am so confused. Uh, let- If you're- If you made it this far, thank you. Um, I would have clicked off by now if I was watching me react to this, especially because I'm sick, so my brain is at level zero right now in terms of thinking, and I'm just, I'm fucking lost. Let me know if you're lost, too, in the comments. Way to your lost brother. Woohoo! Awesome! Phew! I didn't want to say anything, but I was really starting to worry. Now you tell us. So back in Halloween land, Selma is starting to gather her army. Yeah, an army to take over Christmas and make it witch miss. Any semblance of this movie having an overarching like narrative or any sort of like story structure whatsoever? Just, you know, my question is, why did they have a leprechaun in like a Christmas area? Just asking. Right out the window. At this point, there are like 20 minutes left in the movie, and it just starts throwing characters at you left and right. Vampire, check. Uh, pumpkin head guy, check. Zombie mummy from the Coco ripoff that I talked about beforehand, check. You better believe he's here. And oh, I can't forget uh, the skeleton guy. You know, he's my favorite. In any other movie, I would say they wanted this to feel cool. But this movie is so devoid of anything redeeming that like, we have no idea who these people are. The movie has no idea what these people are either, just throwing characters for the sake of putting them in. And it's just exhausting. It would be like if the portals opened up in Endgame and everyone who came out were like characters we just met like 10 minutes ago. And that's like, there's no significance or substance behind them. They're just there. So, you know. So basically characters just thrown in for the sake of having characters in your movie because there wasn't enough time to fill the plot? Sure. The end of Star Wars, uh, the return of Skywalker or whatever. I do apologize. My nose is very runny. And I, and if I'm, like, wiping it, I'm so sorry. I don't have tissues around me. And I, oh, I have a towel. My apologies if this gets, if this series of videos gets a little gross. And what do we get for all of this army building? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. As Cheer and Patrick are getting ready to leave Halloween land... <laughs> Selma scares them, and uh, Cheer uses his good luck powers to um, flirt with her, and she just kind of like gives up the invasion plan, just like that. You're one cute witch. Oh, <laughs> oh my. Well, uh, I, I, I. Too uh, <laughs> damn old to be riding your ease backwards, damn it. They go back to the North Pole. So basically, the power of boners prevented her from stealing Christmas. Okay. The movie is over. No resolution to the invasion or follow-ups with Selma to see how she's feeling about all of this or if she's even learned anything. It just ends. It is genuinely the most abrupt ending I've ever seen in the movie. I actually thought the film was like incomplete and broken, but no, that's the actual ending. It's just that bad. That's right. It will be a witchy old blast. Will there be eggnog? <laughs> At the start of the that forced laughter. <laughs> 
I mentioned how The Nightmare Before Christmas is one of the most iconic stop motion movies of all time and a holiday tradition. Every piece of the movie oozes craftsmanship and artistry and does all of that by being clever and running a tight script that has things to say but also does not overstay its welcome. It is genuinely a fantastic movie. And if you look into the history of that film, you know what a Herculean task it was to get that movie made. Nightmare was an idea that Tim Burton and Henry Selleck had wanted to make for a really long time, but could not get any backers. And the one company that could have done it had actually fired Burton for basically not falling in line with the company's style. And that was Disney. So, Nightmare actually sat on the metaphorical shelf for a long time. That is until Beetlejuice, Batman, and Edward Scissorhands launched Burton into the stratosphere and made him the hottest director to work with at the time. But... Literally, I mean, like, Beetlejuice is getting its sequel this year. Like, it's releasing. The Batman movies were incredible. There was apparently supposed to be a third one, but unfortunately the second one didn't do so well. And Edward Scissorhands is not one of my favorites, but... It's loved by so many people, and Burton is, was so successful doing those movies that it would be stupid for any movie company not to accept him for doing The Nightmare Before Christmas. Burton had contractual obligations to Batman Returns at the time, so he actually couldn't direct the movie, which is where Henry Selleck comes in. All of this to say, Nightmare really was born from chaos. And it seemed chaos would follow it for all of its production. So for those of you who say, oh, The Nightmare Before Christmas isn't Tim Burton's movie, it is. He just unfortunately couldn't be there to film it. As production was ready to begin with a team in studio space ready to go, Henry Selleck was still waiting on the script. And it turns out that the initial writer, Michael McDowell, had his own fascination with white powdery stuff. Let's just say it wasn't snow and had actually just been snorting away his salary and not writing the movie. This meant Selleck, Burton, and more specifically, the movie's composer and singing voice of Jack, Danny Elfman, had to begin with music before Caroline Thompson could come in at the last minute, could write a movie around all the music Elfman had already made. Nightmare was also the very first feature-length stop-motion animated feature at the time requiring not just a very specific set of animators trained in the stop-motion arts, but also craftsmen to construct buildings, make costumes, and of course sculpt the characters. This ragtag group of animators, led by Selleck, worked tirelessly for over three years to develop Nightmare. And what did they get for it? Well, Disney was so off-put by the movie that they distanced themselves from it as much as they could by releasing it under the Touchstone banner and slap Burton's name on it in this attempt to use his clout with audiences to get butts in the seats. Now, the movie did okay upon its release, but in my mind, not as well as it could have done had Disney believed in it and thrown some real power- I feel like if Disney were to release this movie like now, it would have done so much better in theaters than it did in 1993. But either way, I'm still glad that like people didn't give up on it. Like Disney obviously put it in their- Haunted Mansion layover, they sell merch for it year-round. I mean, hell, their scientific, the scientific method book freaking made it onto the shelves along with every other, like, recreation book that they're doing for their movies. Like, they're, they're not stepping away from it anymore, but clearly it's because, you know, they now know they can make a profit off of it. But, you know, if Disney did stick to their guns, I feel like it would have been a more cult classic movie from the start, but I'm glad it's now getting the recognition that it deserves marketing behind it. However, over the years, uh, the movie would find an audience and grow steadily in pop culture until it became the powerhouse that it is today. It really was the little movie that could, a credit to all the people who dared believe in it when no one else would. Now I say all of this, that if you're going to rip off a movie like Nightmare Before Christmas, you better realize the size of the shoes you're trying to fill. There is nothing. And I mean nothing redeeming about this movie. Its animation at times is borderline non-existent. Characters will just stand in one place. It literally just looks like it was created in MS Microsoft Paint. Like, for fucking real. Moving and unblinking while their lower jaws just move ever so slightly to mimic speaking. And oh, the character models. These character models. I'm just gonna assume that not a single model in this movie was made specifically for this movie. 
but were just instead asset packs ripped off the internet. Patrick, for example, feels like, <laughs> I don't know, a model from a uh, uh, LOL surprise video game. <laughs> and Jesus Christ, what is going on with Santa's mouth? Why is it so off-puttingly realistic compared to the other characters? Literally, it's got like the dark part in the middle, the lighter lips on the outside. They just said, throw, throw the budget on Santa Claus. That's where we're going to throw the $20 budget we have for this movie. I think the worst thing is that at the end of the day, the movie has absolutely no soul to it, unlike Nightmare, which is just oozing with passion. I look at Jack, who I consider such a heart-achingly tragic, albeit overly dramatic, character, and then I look at Selma. The best characters aren't without a little bit of drama in their life who is such a nothing burger that she's barely a presence in her own movie. Or how about Lock, Shock, and Barrel? Remember those guys? Who, with their limited screen time, still managed to have a thousand percent more presence through their performance and animation than all the side characters in this movie combined. None of the jokes land, not a single character is memorable, and it feels slapped together and shoved out the door to be content fodder at the bottom of a Walmart discount bin where some unfortunate kid's grandma will get this instead of the Nightmare Before Christmas. That's their strategy. Fuck you out now. Listen. I feel like the elves and like the little leprechaun in that movie were more present than the witch herself. That That's just how I see it. I'm not saying movies that lift heavily from other movies can't be good. For example, I think every movie about a small kid befriending an otherworldly creature, pretty much all OET, a great debt. But that does not mean that they can't put their own creative spin on things. How to Train Your Dragon has a lot of ET in its DNA, but it's also its own beautiful beast as well. And maybe, just maybe, the people behind Witchmas maybe wanted to do the same thing at the start, but just gave up instead and decided to just treat it all like a chore rather than something they cared about. Nah, that's a lie. They don't give a fuck. They just wanted to copy Nightmare Before Christmas for money. Who am I kidding? It's just con- This kind of like reminds me of as if like a, a fourth grader was shown like how to use an animation like application on a laptop was given like two months of training and then was told to have a movie done by the end of the year. That's how I see this. And to just make shovelware content in order to take up a kid's time when they could have been watching something else. Like I generally don't like to say things feel AI generated because I think even if something is bad, you should try to respect and genuinely critique the human effort that goes into it. But this movie feels AI generated to a T. And the most damning thing about that, this movie came out in 2020, years before ChatGPT was even a thing your regular everyday person could get their hands on. Now I know I sound over- Damn, that is very depressing right now and I know that this movie just continues in a long line of cheap cash grab ripoffs designed to trick clueless consumers but it really hits different when not only does it happen to your favorite movie but it's also this bad when there's no respect for the people who put their blood sweat and tears into the original and had to fight a corporate uphill battle to even get the movie noticed you can't help but get extra- Literally, the amount of effort that went into The Nightmare Before Christmas is fucking ridiculous. Again, this movie was the longest hour of my life, and I'm never going to get it back. Fuck you, Selma. You are truly evil, and I hate you wow now. I'm coming for ya. <laughs> so, obviously, there's a lot to say here. Uh... First of all, to the creators and everyone who worked on Nightmare, Henry Selleck, Tim Burton, Danny Elfman, all of the stop motion animators, the writer who actually wrote the movie, the amount of effort and creativity that was put into this is incredible. And the fact that they had to fight so much in terms to just get this movie out there on the big screen, backed by somebody, is insane. And I know that you know, Burton probably wanted this movie to do really well, and it didn't, and I really hope that within the th three decades that this movie has progressively gotten more and more popular, that he's, you know, not regretting, you know, waiting so long to have this movie be as popular as it is. 
But anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I'm so sorry if my content is going to be a little rough uh, throughout these next set of videos. Like I said, I am sick, but I still want to get stuff out there to you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts about this in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, little skeletons. Please stay safe. I love you guys.